What Langer was looking for was the private man behind the public face. He was trying to find the deep roots of Hitler's rages and hatreds. Hi, welcome. Thank you for coming. It's a Good to see you. Good to see you again. Under enormous time pressures, he needed help. He put together a small team of psychologists and researchers. We all know this isn't going to be easy. All we're going to get is a mass of raw material. It's been gathered from innumerable sources. None of it's going to be first-hand and none of it's going to be obtained under the controlled conditions of personal psychoanalysis. We can't put Hitler on the couch. Furthermore, it's almost a foregone conclusion that a lot of the information we're going to dig up is going to prove to be untrustworthy and irrelevant. It's a challenge. But we've got no alternative. Now, tell me about your mother. All of this research was analyzed through the lens of Freudianism. The business of psychology has boomed in the second half of the 20th century, spawning a panoply of different analytical approaches. But in America, in 1943, one particular version of Freudianism dominated, a version which placed heavy emphasis on childhood experiences. It seemed like mom spent most of her time helping dad with his business. I guess she didn't have much time left over for me, even when I was sick. For Freud, the personality was constructed in childhood. This, for him, was the crucible where all humans were made. The problem for Langer and his team was that Hitler had been very careful to virtually obliterate his past. They'd very little to go on. What they did know was that Hitler had three brothers who all died young and two sisters. They were also aware that his father was a drunken brute who beat the young Adolf regularly. And, for Langer, that would almost certainly have a significant effect on Hitler's psyche. Under such circumstances, the child becomes confused and is unable to identify himself with a clear-cut pattern that he can use as a guide for his own adjustment. Not only is this a severe handicap in itself, but in addition, the child is given a distorted picture of the world around him and the nature of the people in it. The void is created in childhood. It represents what we've come to call the, the wounded self. Uh, and in, in uh, Hitler's case, we really have to go back several generations to be understanding uh, what was uh, so troubling uh, to this man. He described a very sadistic father, uh, Alois, 22 years older than his mother, who was violent uh, with the children, uh, would beat the dog uh, and, until it urinated, uh, at one point left Hitler for dead after a savage beating. Lange suspected that Hitler's abusive father would drive him into the arms of his mother, which would have profound psychological consequences. Langer was presented with an opportunity to test this theory when he tracked down the Hitler family doctor in New York. His name was Dr. Eduard Bloch. He was Jewish and had escaped from Austria when the Nazis annexed the country in 1938. Did Hitler have any medical problems? Oh, I only treated him for minor colds, uh, 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 of course, measles. <laughs> he was a weak child, but he had no physical deformity uh, um, and definitely no tuberculosis, although tuberculosis was uh, hereditary in the family from the father's side. Well, I suppose if that's the case, you can't have known him very well. On the contrary, I was the Hitler family doctor. I, I got to know them uh, all very well when I was treating his mother for uh, breast cancer. I gave her an injection every day. What was Hitler like with his mother? Well, uh, I have to say that uh, the relationship between a mother and son, uh, their um, reciprocal adoration was unusual. How did this manifest itself? 
When I summoned Hitler and his two sisters, who were married, they didn't live at home, and when I summoned them to my office to tell them their mother was gravely ill with no hope of recovery, his reaction to this news was touching. Uh, his long, sallow face was contorted, uh, tears uh, flowed from his eyes. The girls, on the other hand, received the news with calm, uh, reserve. Only then did I realize the magnitude of the relationship that existed between mother and son. When his mother finally died of breast cancer, Dr. Bloch was amazed at Hitler's reaction. In the practice of my profession, it is, of course, uh, quite natural that I uh, should have witnessed uh, many scenes such as this one. Yet none has left me with quite the same impression. In all my career, I have never seen anyone so prostrate with grief as Adolf Hitler. His mother would turn in her grave if she knew what he turned out to be. For Hitler, his mother's grave became something of a shrine. There's evidence in one of the many home movies shot by Hitler's lover, Eva Braun. This one shows Hitler, Eva, and some friends on a trip to Leonding, where the Fuhrer grew up, and the site of his mother's grave. Her son covered the tombstone in Nazi icons and memorabilia. Eva took no moving pictures of Hitler at the graveside, but there are a series of telling still images. Every scrap of evidence indicates there was an extremely strong attachment between Hitler and his mother. This was due in part to the fact that she had lost two or possibly three children before Adolf was born. And since he too was frail as a child, it's natural that she'd do everything in her power to guard against the recurrence of her earlier tragedy. And the result was that she catered to his whims, even to the point of spoiling him, and that she was overprotective in her attitude toward him. For Langer's team, Hitler's infatuation with his mother and loathing for his father was a perfect fit for Freud's famous Oedipus complex. Uh, life with his mother must have been a veritable paradise for Adolf, uh, except for the fact of when his father would intrude and disrupt the happy relationship. As he got older, infantile sexual feelings were probably quite prominent in this relationship. This is the Oedipus complex. The more he hated his father, the more dependent he became upon the affection and love of his mother. And the more he loved his mother, the more afraid he became of his father's vengeance should he be discovered. Every little boy, as he is uh, desperately wanting the total love of his mother, comes to see his father as a rival. This, however, can be particularly powerful if you have had an overly attentive mother, as Hitler did, and an abusive father, as Hitler did. But with that abuse of authority, uh, there is on the one hand the wish to get rid of him, but on the other hand the fear of his power, uh, which is represented in the so-called castration complex. For a Freudian like Langer, this extreme castration anxiety could manifest itself in adulthood, in the fear of syphilis. Freud even had a name for it, syphilophobia. Throughout Mein Kampf, he comes back to the topic of syphilis again and again, and spends almost an entire chapter describing its horrors. In almost all cases, we find that a fear of this sort is rooted in a fear of genital injury during childhood. Langer continued to examine Hitler's childhood through the lens of Freudianism. I mean, this is a, we're doing as best we can with what we have. 
For the father of psychology, there were five clearly delineated stages of growing up. And what Langer was looking for were signs that one of the stages had gone wrong. Because, according to Freud, if they did, there would be profound psychological consequences. Dr. Bloch provided corroborating evidence for this theory. Uh, Hitler and his mother lived in um, a rented uh, apartment. It was a small place, rather poor. My uh, predominant impression of this simple furnished apartment was its uh, cleanliness. Oh, it, it glistened. Uh, not a speck of dirt on the, um, the chairs or the tables, uh, not a, a stray fleck of mud on the scrubbed floor, not a smudge on the panes of the windows. Frau Hitler was a superb housekeeper. Hitler's mother's obsessive cleanliness was significant for Langer. It indicated that the toilet training phase of Hitler's childhood might have gone wrong. Now, you can't say that. All right, all right. Well, how about this? From what we know about his mother's excessive cleanliness and tidiness, we may assume she employed rather stringent measures during the toilet training period of the children. We know this usually results in a residual tension in this area. It's regarded by the child as a severe frustration that arouses feelings of hostility. And this facilitates an alliance with his infantile aggression that finds an avenue for expression through anal activities and fantasies. These usually center around soiling, humiliation, and destruction, and form the basis of a sadistic character. Aber dass die Partei weiterleben wird, das weiß ich, und dass über alle Personen, über Schwach und Stark hinweg, die Zukunft der deutschen Nation erfolgreich gestalten wird, das glaube ich und das weiß ich.